Okay, so here's the deal. Today we're gonna to be talking about cyber power, UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies, and why I think these are the best units to buy for a person that's maybe working remotely permanently now, or maybe just working in a small office and want some battery backup. Why would you want battery backup? Because the power grid isn't always 100% reliable. So if you're on a Zoom call or a WebEx call, you're on a telephone call and the power goes out, it's abrupt, bam, you're out. Everyone on the other side has no idea what just happened, but that person is gone. So with a UPS, you know, if you don't have a generator, at least you'll be able to tell the people, hey, my power just went out, I'm on battery backup, I've got about five, 10 more minutes, um, but I'm gonna have to leave this call right now. So at least you can get out of that call gracefully and not just a hard shutdown. And if you do have a generator, you're not gonna notice anything. Power is gonna go out, this kicks on until your generator kicks on, that might take 30 seconds, and then you're and then you're running again totally on AC power. So today we're gonna go through how to size these things properly, how big of a UPS do you need, where you should place it. We're gonna go over a couple different tools as far as figuring out your load and some, some calculations here. And I'm going to put a link to all this stuff in the description of the video. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, if you want to go ahead and purchase this, you could buy these things right on Amazon. Again, I'll have the link right in there. Same thing with this device here called a kilowatt. So why don't we jump into this video and we'll go over how to size these things properly. Okay, so as far as sizing goes, CyberPower puts a really cool runtime chart on their website. So the, the unit that I've picked and the one that I have sitting right next to me is the CP1500 AVR LCD. And there's a reason I picked this one. It's, it's about the largest consumerish grade UPS that you're going to be able to buy at a decent price. Okay. And it is a 900 watt maximum, as you guys can see here. Um, they call it a 1500 VA or volt ampers. And basically what that is, is if this thing was 100% efficient, we'd be able to push out 1500 watts, but there's something called a power factor in there. And when we do the conversion from DC to AC, that 1500 potential watts actually uh, goes down to about 60% or 900 watts. There are you know, more expensive units on the market that, hey, if it's a 1500 VA unit, you'll actually be able to push out 1500 watts watts on it but again consumer grade something lower cost i picked this thing up for around i think it was like 160 bucks you can check the link in the description um again for what the price of it is but if you go into the power chart for this and the runtime calculator here you can see that if i have this thing loaded up to the maximum i'm only going to get about two minutes and that might be okay if you do have a, a backup generator but if you don't, you know, where is kind of that sweet spot? And I think that sweet spot is probably around the 400 watt mark. So if you do lose power and you've got about 400 watts on this thing, you're going to get about 15 minutes to again, tell people on the other line, guys, I have to wrap this call up very soon. I'm on battery backup. I've got about 15 minutes left. Um, and, you know, hopefully the power comes on before that, but that's kind of realistically what you're looking at. And again, I'll have the link to this in the description. Now the question is, how do we figure out how much wattage we need for all my devices? And that's where this kilowatt device comes into play. So I went into my basement where I have all my equipment. And what I did is I used a little jumper cable here just to make it because this thing is huge when you plug it into the wall. Connected this to the jumper. Connected this side to the wall. And then plugged in a little power strip I had right to here with all my devices on it. And then I read the wattage number off of this. And I stared at it for a couple minutes because I wanted to see how much fluctuation we were actually going to have. With all my devices plugged in, my router, my access point, my switch, all that stuff, I was running about 430 watts of power, which is pretty typical for, for what I was going to expect there. So looking at that i know based off of this chart here you know i'm between 400 we'll call it 500 watts um i'm gonna get somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes if there's a power failure for me that's perfect i do have a, a generator so you know it's there and in case it doesn't come on again i can end that call gracefully so you're going to want to look at this chart first to really figure out how much time 
you need. If you don't need this much time, like, hey, we've I've only got 100 watts on there. Well, you're going to get 83 minutes. That might be too much for you. Or maybe you want to stick with it because, again, the price of these things is, is you know, we'll call it cheap. Um, you'll be able to get a lot of time out of there if you're only at 100 watts. Or you can go down in size a little bit as well. So that's how you basically size these things. Now, let's turn this thing around and I'm going to show you guys the plugs on the back of it so you can see exactly what needs to go where and what you have capacity for on them. Okay, so let's take a look at the back here. And you can see there's two different sides where things need to plug in. On this side here with the gray plugs, this is your battery plus surge protection right here. So these are the plugs that you are going to want to use for whatever you want to back up. The other side here is just a regular surge protector style. So, you know, you can plug other devices in here, um, but just know that if you do lose power, these are not, you're not gonna be protected with anything. The other cool thing about this side here is this actually is a AVR, so an automatic voltage regulator. So whatever's plugged into this side here as well, it's actually gonna regulate the voltage. So if there is a little bit of a spike or a dip or something like that, your devices that are plugged into here are not going to freak out. They're not going to reboot. You're not going to get a flicker, any of that. It's going to keep the power nice and constant with everything that's on this side here. There is a 15 amp circuit built right into this. So that's probably what you have in your circuit panel downstairs. So it's not like, oh, you know, you're only going to get 10 amps out of this or six amps out of this. Nope. You're going to get your full electrical load um, from your, from your panel. Um, I don't recommend plugging a hairdryer or anything like that into this thing, but any electronic devices in here, you are going to be fine. You're not going to overwhelm this device here. If you end up do tripping that, you've got your, your little red button right there to reset it. And then up at the top here, a couple different things. You've got your USB or serial port for management. We're going to plug into the USB in a second here. I'm going to show you what you can do with the tool that comes with this. It's actually pretty cool. There's some neat features in there. Um, cereal, I doubt anyone's going to use cereal. I'm tempted to try it out just to see what it does, but uh, there is an option on there uh, for cereal as well if you want to manage it that way. There is two network ports. I guess if you're worried about surges on your network, to be honest with you, I probably would never use these. Um, don't plug your phones into it, apparently. They've got a little warning symbol next to that. And then you also have your coax that you can run through here as well. Again, I don't know how I feel about running the coax through here. I don't know what kind of filters are on there. Um, if it's going to interfere with, you know, DOCSIS 3 standards or anything like that. But if you are worried about it and you've had a spike previously through your coax connection, and um, you know, you can, you can plug your coax directly in through that as well. One other important thing, when you get this box and you take it out of its packaging, you're going to want to plug it in for eight hours before you do anything. You need to make sure that those batteries are fully charged before you turn this thing on. And there's even a little sticker on the top of this unit that goes over that. And if you don't, it's not going to actually power on. So take it out of the box, plug it in somewhere for eight hours, leave it overnight, and then you are ready to go. So let's go ahead and let's USB into this thing just so I can show you guys some of the features of it. So I went ahead and plugged in my UPS via USB and they give you a USB B to USB A cable in the box. Now I've got USB C in my laptop, so I had to buy a little dongle to connect it. You guys can get those all over the place if you need it. And then we pull up the power panel. And this is a software that actually helps you monitor and manage this box. So if you take a look at it right here, a couple cool things on the initial page here. You can tell that it's running on utility power right now. That means it's it's taking in current from um, your electrical panel. Takes a look at your voltage, 118 volts. Everything is normal. We can take a look there. Battery capacity right now, 100%. I will note too that the warranty on this thing. So there's actually three years warranty on the battery, which is pretty cool for you know the 160 bucks that I paid. If something was to happen in four or five years on the road, I don't think I'd be too crushed at that where I had to purchase a new one, but there is a three-year warranty on this to begin with. And then we can go ahead and we can actually calculate how much time is left on these batteries based on what the UPS load is. So all the stuff that I ended up plugging into here, you know, if I've got 400 watts, this runtime will probably show like you know 10 minutes or whatever it was on that chart. If I click over to the summary here, this is where you go in and you see how many power outages you've had. So if you're trying to 
you know, talk to your utility company, be like, man, I keep losing power. You can actually keep track of it right inside of here, which is pretty cool. Event logs, you can go in and get more detail of when I actually lost power, times, dates, you know, all that stuff. Energy reporting. One of the things that I did not know that this thing actually did before I purchased it. And it's kind of one of those cool Easter eggs. And I'm really glad it's there because I was always curious about it. What this is, is you can put in how much it costs you per kilowatt hour. And right now it's set by default at 12 cents per kilowatt hour. I think that's the average around the, the country right now. Uh, I looked at my bill and sure enough, I was right at 12, 12 cents per kilowatt hour. I think I was just under like 11.8 cents per kilowatt hour or whatever uh, but that's already programmed in there for you there's some stuff in here about co2 emissions you know if you're into that and you're, you're looking to go green and then if we go over to the gear tab here uh, another interesting thing that you can do so if you have this thing constantly plugged into a desktop or via usb or maybe a server maybe you have a small server in your basement or it's a, a small business that you're running um, you can actually have it shut down that server or that desktop after a certain amount of minutes. And the reason you'd want that is because think about if you didn't have a UPS, it's a hard shut off on that server. It's a hard shut off on that desktop computer that you have, but you've got a UPS. So this allows you to stay up for 10 minutes, but what happens after the batteries and this thing die, it's going to be again, another hard shut off. So it's really nice to be able to say, okay, you know, let's leave the computer on for five minutes. Hopefully it's a quick brownout and bam, we're back up. The computer doesn't have to go down or anything, doesn't have to get rebooted. But after five minutes, yeah, this, you know, this might be a little bit more than a quick brownout. So gracefully, this tool is actually going to shut down that computer, or whatever it is, a server or a desktop. So that's, that's all in here. You've got self-tests that you can do. There's notifications in here. Again, if you are plugged into a computer, you can have it. Um, email you out an alert to your phone that says, hey, you lost power. Some stuff in here about runtime. This is where I actually set after X amount of minutes. I want to shut down that computer. And then we also have some voltage stuff in here. Um, UPS will actually start taking effect if you drop below 100 volts or you go above 139. I wouldn't touch this unless you're you know, an electrical engineer, or an electrician, and really know what you're talking about on these. I would leave those alone. Self-test in here as well. You can go ahead, click that, get, get the alarm going off. And then under advanced, I would really, really not recommend touching this. But basically, you can start to set, um, you know, the sensitivity for, for different things. So, you know, you don't want to make it overly sensitive and you don't want to make it underly sensitive where you start hurting your devices. So, again, I would leave this stuff alone and I really wouldn't worry about anything that's that's in this advanced tab here. So guys, that's that's it. You know, if you are in the market for a battery backup, I think the Cyber Power is a really good unit to, to get, uh, especially for the price, 900 watts. You're gonna be able to power most everything you need that's important. You know, I'm gonna have a Cisco switch plugged into this thing. I've got a wireless access point that's gonna be plugged in via power injector and a couple other things here and there that are gonna be plugged in and it should be able to keep my house up for about 10 minutes. And again, that's just enough time if my generator doesn't kick in to say, hey, I lost power. Let me shut down this meeting gracefully. And you know, you kind of preserve that meeting quality there. So if you guys have any questions, please post in the in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.